Good afternoon, good evening to you, wherever you happen to be in the world. I hope you're having a beautiful day. It's Saturday, folks. Captain Coder here, and I'm having such a beautiful morning. Any day I can wake up and code with the crew is a beautiful day. I'm a little bit tired. I feel like uh, uh, maybe, maybe it's the new house. Maybe it's because I've been doing streaming every day. I'm not sure what it is. But I have not been sleeping as well as I normally do. Normally, boom, I fall asleep and I'm out. But maybe I feel I think maybe maybe there's this little bit of little bit of pressure. Maybe we got a little bit of pressure from Advent of Code this year. Last year there was no pressure. I, I didn't. I had like less than you know. You, I had like one viewer, which was me, and and then another one came and was Smab a little bit later, and it was just me and Smab uh, 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 doing something. Maybe I'm a little bit nervous. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what it is. But uh, but I'm a little tired. I'm a little tired, but that's okay. I got my I got my 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 bean water with me. I got my bean water. Oh, mmm. Got my bean water with me. I got I got my fresh water with me. My hydration water. Mmm. I'm but uh, I did get, I did go to bed early. I made uh last night. Last night was uh. I made, I, I got a, my stand mixer. I finally got a stand mixer again. My kitchen's been too small to have the appliances I want. Got a stand mixer last night. And uh, I made, uh, for the first time in like four or five years, I made homemade whipped cream, homemade whipped cream and homemade eggnog. Oh, it was so good. It was so good. I had that and then I fell, I, oh, it was great. I don't, I'm just rambling here. I don't know, I don't know what this has to do with anything, but last night was that, and then I went to bed. I woke up really early this morning. Uh, my watch said, okay, so it's not as bad. Let's see, my watch tracks my sleep. My watch actually says I got six hours and 45 minutes of sleep. Six hours and 45 minutes of sleep, but it's been like, uh, I haven't been getting, I haven't been getting as much sleep as I normally do. All right, folks, it's so good. It <laughs> sounds like it's coding, calm down, <laughs> coding chemist. How, how dare you? How dare you? The diet's going fabulous. <laughs> no, since I, I got in the new house, I, I got in the new house. Oh my goodness. This kitchen's amazing. Do I have a picture? Hang on. Let me get a pic. I, I posted a picture. I don't think I posted it on our Discord, but I have another picture. Hang on. My new kitchen's so nice. <clears throat> um, I, and I love, I love cooking. Uh, a copy image here. Let's see. Can I get this? Oh, well, let me put this up here. Hang on, hang on um copy link let me open this here oh look at this look at this kitchen here look this is my this is my kitchen oh look at that it got i got a five a gas five burner gas stove i can use a griddle again and put my griddle on there and cook we've got two ovens we got two ovens look at all this space whoa. thank you for the wall look at all this space for baking i got my stand mixer over there we got a hydroponic garden. there's another you can't see it but over here is like a big hydroponic garden oh i got my another little convection oven over here uh, so I can do do some like oh just like small bangs up oh I love cooking I love cooking you guys have no idea how much I love cooking um, it's like one of my favorite things to do um, the whipped cream, go and give us the whipped cream and eggnog diet Scott B I'm always around but that's probably true that's probably true we get we don't we don't always get that much done here mmm. Uh, all right, so I just want to say thank you guys so much for being here on this beautiful ha Did I say happy Friday? I meant happy Saturday. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening to you Captain Coder here We are doing the advent of code advent of code. What day are we on? Uh, day nine. Holy cannoli. We're on day nine. That means it's December 9th tuna in the house We've got a tuna omelet I love that tuna omelet. You know it's so tasty and good, and has 
all the protein that you need. Tuna, welcome back to the stream. It's so nice to see you. And Scott B, 1969, it's so nice to have you back. How's your rust? How's your rust in going? We had a bunch of people sharing rust code yesterday, which was so much fun. So much fun. But we got the whole crew with us today. Clay, man, thank you for being here with us. We got the coding chemists. That name with alliteration. I love that alliteration. Coding chemist, I'm glad you're here. We got Kylor, G, Nick, Scott, 19, Scott B, 1969. I keep wanting to say Scott B, 1963, but it's 1969, and that's okay. That's okay. Just finished fighting with iterators uh, in Rust. Iterators in Rust. Um, yeah, I need to... Uh, there's so many things that I want to do. There's so many things that I want to do. I want to do more with Rust. I've done so little. I've done so little, but we're on day nine here. I'm expecting a challenging one here. Here comes the vibes. Good vibes. Oh, good vibes. Bring them on into the stream. You know, yes, good vibes. Oh, good vibes. Bring it into the show. Oh, oh, good vibes. Welcome back. How's it going, Ben? Uh, I fight with everything in Rust Coding Chemist says. All right, folks, let's look at day nine here. We're going to read this one out. It's a Saturday. We're still in single digits, so I can't expect it to be too hard. Um, but it is a Saturday. It is a Saturday, and we usually get, and may, this isn't always true, but it feels like people always say Saturdays are the days where they give us the harder, harder puzzles. But that could just be later on anyway. But let's take a look here. We were, we just finished up Ghost. We've escaped the desert, supposedly. But here we are on Mirage Maintenance. Mirage Maintenance. You ride the camel through the sandstorm and stop where the ghost's map told you to stop. The sandstorm subsequently subsides, subsides, somehow seeing you standing at an oasis. Somehow seeing you standing. All right, so we made it to an oasis. The camel goes to get some water and you stretch your neck. Ugh. Oh, as you look up, you discover that uh, you discover what must be yet another giant floating island. This one made of metal. That must be where the parts to fix the sand machine come from. There's even a hang glider partially buried in the sand here. Once the sun rises and heats up the sand, you might be able to use the glider and the hot air to get all the way up to the metal island. Well, you wait for the sun to rise. You admire the oasis hidden here in the middle of Desert Island. You know, I want, I want there to be a desert island, and just you know, with with eggnog and whipped cream and and, and cakes. Uh, Balderuvian, I got yours. Uh, can you rate my drawing, Balderuvian? We'll check it out in just a moment. I don't know why. Let's give you permission. Permit, Balderuvian Molten. Bal Baldurvin, Baldurvin. I always said Baldurvian. It should. Uh, what's this? Oh, this just uh, that going on there. Okay. I want a dessert island. We'll rate your drawing in just a moment. We'll rate your drawing in just a moment. Give me a second here to finish getting through this. Um, but yeah, that cues it up, folks. Exclamation point question. Let's make sure it got queued up. Question. There it is. All right. Now I won't forget. At 5:08 a.m. On December 9th, Baldurvin question asked, can you rate my drawing? We're gonna see. We're gonna read we're gonna we're gonna try. Well you wait for the sun. I didn't uh, I didn't use any GPT, gotcha. Well you wait for the sun to rise. You admire the oasis hidden in the middle of Desert Island. It must have a delicate ecosystem. You might as well take some ecological readings while you wait. Maybe you can report any environmental instabilities you find to someone so the oasis can be around for the next sandstorm. Warn Traveler. You pull out your handy oasis and sand instability sensor. We just have, look, good thing we have one of these. You know, let me go get, like, I have one of these sitting in my garage. I never get to use it. I'm so glad I finally get to use it. You pull out your OSIS. Oasis, O A S I S, Oasis. Ah, clever. That's cute. And analyze your surroundings. The Oasis produces a report of many values and how they are changing over time. Each line in the report contains the history of a single value. For example, 0, 0369, 1215, 136, 10, 15, 21, etc. 
To best protect the oasis, your environmental report should include a prediction of the next value in each history. Redstone, welcome back. I'm doing absolutely wonderful. Any day I can wake up and code is a beautiful day, Redstone. I hope you're having a beautiful day. How's car blocks going? To do this, start by making a new sequence from the difference at each step of your history. If that sequence is not all zeros, repeat this process using the sequence you just generated as the input sequence. Um, hang on, I got this. To do this, start by making a new sequence for the difference at each step of the history. If that sequence is not all zeros, repeat this process using the sequence you just generated as the input sequence. Once all of the values in the latest sequence are zeros, you can extrapolate what the next value of the original history is. So we're looking at the difference. It sounds like we're looking at the difference of each other. Let's look at the example. In the above data set, the first history is 03691215. Because the values increase by three each step, the first sequence of differences that you generate will be 33333. Note that this sequence has one fewer value than the input sequence because at each step it considers two numbers from the input. Since these values aren't all zero, repeat the process. The values differ by zero at each step. So the next sequence is 0000. zero, zero, zero. This means you have enough information to extrapolate the history. Visually, these sequences can be arranged like this. <clears throat> so this is our original line, I believe. Yeah, so this is the top line from here. And there's it, it increases by three. So we have a three all the way across. And then the difference between each one of these is there's no difference. The, the change is zero. So it's kind of like um, what, what, what that would be the... Uh, what, what is it? Um, change over time in calculus is the derivative. Derivative. So it's kind of like a derivative here. That's kind of cool. Um, car, car, so car bricks. Sorry, not car blocks. Voice got deeper. We're, we're, this is just my reading voice. Car blocks. Uh, car bricks. Car bricks. Sorry. Sorry. Car bricks. Uh, Dad says, anyone have advice on a notepad tablet for basic UI design sketches and notes for programming? I noticed Captain used one. I've looked at Remarkable too, but it's pretty pricey. Yeah, it's, oh, it's overpriced. Um, I think it's overpriced. I got it as a gift. I probably would not buy it of my own volition. Um, and this also, like for me, I got it <clears throat> when it first came out. You know, it's $500. I think it's less now, but you have to pay a subscription or something. Um, I use it every day. It's a high, I would say it's a high productive productivity device, um, but it just does writing it. You can't install apps or anything like that. Um, yeah, I, I, I really love it. I use it daily. Um, <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry you can't hurt, work on it at the moment, Redston. All right. To extrapolate, start by adding a new zero to the end of your list of zeros. Because the zeros represent differences between the two values above them, this also means there's a new placeholder in every sequence above it. All right, so we added a zero at the end and then a placeholder above and above. You can then start filling in the placeholders from the bottom up. A needs to be the result of increasing three, the value to its left by zero. Ah, because we have a zero here, the this, of course, would mean that the number to the right is increased by zero. So we just pull that number of cross. OK, finally, you can fill in B, which needs to be the result of increasing 15 by the value to its left, which is three. All right. So we increase it. So we get 18. Finding all non zero differences for the second history requires an additional sequence. All right. So this is the next sequence and the difference is two, three, four, five, six. And then down here, that increases by one, we get down to zero. And then we go back up where we put a zero at the end of that sequence and we add in a one, we add in a seven, we add in a 28 all the way up. Um, what did they call this? They call this to extrapolate. Okay. Um, then we go down. The third value is a 68. If you find the next value for each history in this example and add them together, you get 114. Analyze your Oasis report and extrapolate the next value for each history. Each history, what is the sum of these extrapolated values? Okay, let's take a look at our uh, puzzle input. We got some big ones, some big numbers. Um, looks like we have about 50 rows of input. 
I don't think we have to do anything clever here. Part one, we usually don't. Um, I don't know that we could do anything clever. I'm just going to write... Feels like a pretty basic thing here where we just uh, pull out the sequences and then work our way back up. Just follow the, the algorithm that they describe here. Um, okay. All right. We're going to try it. <clears throat> I need to uh, set up my project. I haven't set up a project yet. Um, I usually... I forgot. We're still in Smab's project here. All right. Let's come on back. Let's exit this. Um, we got to make a day eight, make there zero nine. Sorry, folks, I usually do this ahead of time, but now you can see that you can see how the sausage is made, as they say. You get to see the sausage being made. Uh, dot net new. You get to see that I I do everything from the terminal, um, and then we're gonna make an implementation. Make their uh, tests. It's going to our implementation folder. .NET new console. Um, I thought it was fun today. Did anyone already know this method to figure out the next number? Um, I used to do puzzles like this as a kid. Welcome to Lurk Mode, Redston. Um, so this reminds me of a type of puzzle that we used to do as a kid to figure out the a pattern of increasing numbers. Um, but I've never implemented in programming, I don't think. Um, it seems pretty easy. I'm going, well, well, we'll get there. We'll see what it is. But essentially you just have like a loop um, and you have the next number in the sequence. We'll, we'll, we'll see, we'll see. It, I don't think it's gonna be that hard. We just follow the algorithm. You need to keep track of all of your sequences. So you have like a list of lists and you just build it up. Uh, you go back a list or something. It might even kind of feels like a nice recursive solution. Cause you're always going down in your base cases when all your numbers are zero. Uh, you add a zero and then you go back and using that you can fill in the last one uh, from the previous. So I think I can do it in a recursive way. <clears throat> Let's make an X unit test here. Um, I should, I'm realizing I should, I've, I've been committing my, for the last couple days, I've committed my solution in my tests. Um, Cody gives, I used recursion, gave a nice and simple, Draco, long time no see, Draco, how you doing, buddy? I'm glad you're here, welcome back to the stream. Balint, how we doing, my friend? It's nice to have you, .NET, add reference, add our implementation here. Um, and then I would like to use shouldly and I can, add, I should, I should, uh, <clears throat> I shouldly remember this, but I don't because I never actually type it out. I just pull it in here. Uh, you could also do a loop. There's nothing wrong with doing it as a loop. Uh, recursion might not be, uh, it, you might get a stack overflow. Some of these might be too big. The, the line numbers seem short enough though. None of these lines are crazy long. I should make it so that in my test here, oh, I need to open this project up now. Um, I didn't actually add these to the solution yet. Hang on. Uh, .NET SLN add implementation. .NET SLN add test. For anyone who doesn't know, when you're using Visual Studio, um, it's running all these commands for you on your behalf. But it's good to know. How you doing, Balintz? I'm so glad you're here, my friend. I'm happy to have you on this beautiful day. Let's make sure we open up. Let's go check out this real quick. Let's get this questions in here. We'll close this. Balintz. Not Balint, uh, Baldurvin Moten. Let's take a look at your picture here. I'm gonna open it up on my other screen first just to make sure there's nothing. I trust you, I trust you, but trust and verify. Trust and verify, let's see. Ooh, we got ourselves a Dragon Ball Z, a little Dragon Ball yeah. Z re reference. Um, um, it doesn't like my ad blocker, hang on. I gotta, I gotta disable my ad blocker to use, um, to, to use Imgur these days, apparently. Is this an MS Paint? What did you do this in? This is a nice, look. This is Vegeta. Vegeta with a, tra there's some transparent background behind him. This looks like a Sprite. Did you a Sprite or Libra Sprites? Hex Tree! Holy cannoli. Thank you for the, uh, thank you for the raid. Hex Tree, welcome aboard. I would like to welcome you 
Thank you for rating. Thank you for being. Thank you for rating me. Hextree, welcome to the stream. Happy to have you here, my friend. Uh, just off day nine. We're working on day nine. Uh, we, we're just starting here. Congrats on your stars. Easier to write than yesterday's. Okay. Yeah, I would give um, <clears throat> this is it a sprite little pixel art here. I'd give this a seven out of ten. Seven out of ten for pixel art. Not bad. Thank you for sharing it with us. Uh, Budu uh, points and Budge Dose Balint fifty points. Thank you so much for sharing. I appreciate it. All right, we just set up our project here. We just set up our project, um, and I'm gonna write in our tests initially here. I need to make it so we read these things in. Um, all right, Smab, maybe you can help me. You can help. And someone help me. Smab, I'm rated into where I already am. Smab, I'm glad you're here, my friend. Glad to have you on this beautiful day. Uh, but yeah, Hextree, let's give a shout out to Hex. A shout out, Hextree. Thank you again for the raid. Hextree is up. At, oh, look that follow button. I wasn't following. Folks, give that little heart a follow. Um, I believe, Hextree, are you on our leaderboard? Um, admin of code. I have a, a private leaderboard. With Hextree, I think you're 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 killing it as well. Hextree, look at Hextree just smashing through third place right now on our, our personal tree. Uh, Captain Cutter down here in twelfth place, twelfth place. Uh, but it's not a competition, folks. Not a competition. It's just fun. Um, Drake says, "Did you know that there's a database which contains all images that ever taken and images that will be taken in the future?" I did not know that. That sounds that sounds extreme. That sounds extreme. Is it? Uh, is it the the database? Database. Um, is it? Uh, yeah. No, I did not know that. Uh, and four, we're two minutes shorter than today's one. That'll put you in perspective. Gotcha. Well, we're still on part one. I haven't even started my implementation. Let's rewrite this. Um, let's do a git add git commit dash m chore initial initialize solution for day nine. Push that up. Uh oh. Get push, not puss. Get puss. Don't get puss. Gotta get push. Okay. We're gonna call this day nine tests. Rename this day nine tests. Uh, we'll call this day uh, uh, test sample input uh, part one. We'll come over to our implementation. I'm gonna create a new file day nine. I should do it day zero nine probably, but that's okay. Public class day nine. And let's do a public static. We're getting a number back, right? Uh, long, go with long. Long part one string input return zero. And this one is gonna be, let's get our sample input here. Sample input like so. Deshomara, welcome back to the stream. How are you on this beautiful day? Public static string sample input um, like this. Boom, we got that in there. A little trim at the end. Let, let's put this on, on the LF line mode. Do a little save here. And we'll do day nine dot part one sample input dot should be and we should be the puzzle is 114 114 here boom boom we got it in so organized look it's i, I learned from watching smab i learned from watching smab uh smab's the one that got me got me and i don't know if it's so organized but smab's the one that's got me got me being smarter with this stuff so I appreciate Smab. If I miss something in the chat, let me know. Um, but Cestro Mara, nice to have you here. Ooh, you got an inventory system. What type of inventory system are you using? Is it, um, is it like a grid-based inventory system? What are we talking about? Whimsically made. Also, I'm so glad you're here, my friend. It's nice to have you. Nice to have you aboard. Um, I'm on uh, nick.youtube if you want to catch the next one. Nick, I was going to ask you. I was going to ask you. I want to get, I love your little icon uh, on your on your stream. I tried to, I love this guy. I love this guy. 
would you be able to send me look i don't have any any weird plans or anything but could you send me a copy of this just this image of this guy here i want to create a little shout out for you on on the channel uh and have this guy sort of pop out um because i love that i love that but yeah if you could send me a, that image on discord i'd love to um create a little thing for you to to promote your youtube channel um no pressure you don't have to but i would love to have it um I like the rigor of having tests there. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't, you know, I'm not, I'm not as, I'm not, I'm not doing it for the speed. I'm doing it for the fun. I'm doing it for the fun. Um, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it's like, uh, I love my uh, my Captain Coder logo. Uh, the insert works like this. Jerk said you can have infinite stackable items, but you can only have three unstackable items. So there's two types. Um, which one did I find most challenging? I think day five was the most challenging one so far. Let's see, what were the, the puzzle on day five? Uh, fertilizer. This one, was this one the most challenging one? I wanna say day five part two was the most challenging so far. Yesterday should have been, but um, they gave us a Yesterday was almost a crazy one um, because there was going to be, but but they gave us some really nice inputs on it. Um, Zero, welcome to the stream as well. But yeah, I think day five. What were the other ones? Uh, scratch cards. This one was this one was straightforward. Um, yeah, I think day five part two was the hardest one so far. Most challenging, most challenging. But yeah, we've done them all so far uh, um, on stream, so we're here. I thought I'd go with day five being the hardest. I, part one wasn't too bad. Part two was just tricky. It was a, a tricky, um, a tricky bit. Yesterday you went wild, yes, ma'am. I almost went off the rails yesterday, but but I explained why. Um, I think that in, in, in reading through comments on Reddit, I think all that they really needed to do. All right, so the only thing that needed to have have happened in this particular write-up to make it so people weren't upset would say that every every uh start has a unique path that's what they should have said every start has a unique path and then it technically what was interesting if you looked at the input when you get to the end it always goes back to the beginning um every single one went back to the beginning and did the same cycle over and over so all they had to do was say that have a little a little caveat in there says when you get to the end, you teleport back to the beginning and go again. And then no one would have been mad. No one would have been mad. I'm not, I wasn't mad, by the way. I thought it was fine. Um, yeah, the input, the input was just a nice, uh, not very, very nicely formatted in a way that uh, you didn't have to generalize it. Um, but yeah, I almost, almost went off the deep end yesterday. Uh, let's make sure that uh, we can run this test here and fail. Um, and then we're going to build up. I think as a puzzle, it was fun and okay. Maybe as a program channel, it was undesirable. I, I enjoyed yesterday's puzzle. I had a lot of fun with it. Also, we used to have rare cycles before in other years, but people complain that they don't know how to do uh, uh, the, the, the Chinese remainder theorem. Yeah. Some people print out the graph visually and it looks like a bunch of disjoint circular rings. Yeah. So the rings just sort of, they loop, loop around over and over. Strictly speaking, I never revisited the start it just did a same size loop so nick if you actually look at it um we, we we looked at it here at the end the last node of every one actually had an input that went to the same second node so the first node was like a starting node and there was one step and then the last node would always go to that second node uh so so it was it, it the 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 last node actually always went to the the second node that the the original not the original node but it was sort of like the same step as the original step so it was a loop that essentially and and it's i think they did that because it's easy to construct that input okay all right you win I'm in love with you. Well, all right. Okay, I think I'm gonna go ahead and write a, um, wanna write a function that um, steps down in here. I wanna write a function. One second, let me think, Mr. 
Um, I want to write a function that goes through. Well, I need to parse my input. I need to parse my input. Let's write something that parses. This one should be an easy parse, right? Um, we get a line here and we need to parse this into a list of longs. Uh, Whimsley made said, I do them in sort of a calculator and I looped about a hundred billion times and couldn't find the solution. Thought uh, there might be a pattern to the loops. Um, this is also because it's one step from the start and one step from the end, so the size is constant. Exactly, the size was constant, so it worked out. Well, even if I was unfamiliar, it, it, every time, so here's the thing I don't, it's not like I have it memorized or anything. I understand. Um, I understand the concept. I would I would have to go look it up every time I've ever used it, except in school when I had to memorize it. I basically have to go look up how it works um, again. But essentially, and I think with that one, uh, it's quite an intuition on your part to be able to assume the loops. Oh, I, I wasn't able to assume the loops. I discovered them. I was actually implementing a general solution when I discovered them. Um, I, I was I, I had a plan to do it without the the loops. Um, I was planning to do it with with uh, I knew eventually it was going to cycle back because it has to for the puzzle output to be correct. Um, but I did I did my initial thought on it was not that it looped back uh, symmetrically. Um, yeah. OK, so we need to have. Um, hang on. So it, it Chinese remainder theorem, you have to do it a bunch of times for the whole thing. And then you find the smallest uh, answer on it. So you, you, you couldn't do it. It's still complex. So, so I'm not going to go into it right now. Cause I'm trying to think about this puzzle, but I had a solution. I had, I had written out how I was going to do it on paper. Um, and you can, you can basically step through each step and, and pull out uh things until you get down to a remainder of zero and then you have to do that once for every set of mages in our case we only had six possible six paths to take and so you'd end up with doing it six times um enjoy it uh enjoy it whimsically made remember to keep coding keep growing be the best you can be and you're welcome back anytime my friend rich codes web rich codes web you know Rich Codes Web all the time, and Rich Codes Web has followed me today. Thank you for the follow, Rich Codes Web. I appreciate you. Um, but yeah, Hextree, maybe if there's time at the end of today, I'll show you what my plan was uh, for for yesterday's um, the more generalized case. Hmm. It's good to know um, in cryptography, it's kind of useful. It's kind of useful in cryptography. Is that right? I think that's where I've used it. Um, okay. All right. I got to actually parse this input and we're going to have rows of um, call these sequences. Sequences. So for our input here, input dot splits a uh, new line. I do, I've done this so many times that uh, I should really write this method. I should write this method that just does that. We're gonna split the lines here and then we'll do a select, um, uh, a parse, I have to parse each sequence. I can't quite do just a select parse int on it. Yeah, I should totally make an extension. I should totally make an extension for it. Uh, parse. Split on this and I have a line, a, a list of a, a string array lines like this. And then for each line, I need to do a split on that line. So I'm just gonna write a method here for parse public static um, long array uh, parse line line um, and it's going to be line dot split um new care array of zero uh not line there we go and we'll do this boom um and then dot select parse in a long dot parse all right so we'll parse these in like that um 
And then we have to say that this is a, a, a collection, a collection. Sijian, welcome back to the stream. Use the T number one. Yeah, I think that's really cool. I really like that. I really like that. Mmm. It's a good idea. It's a good idea. All right, so then here we can do... We do the split, and then we'll do a select on parse line. Like this. Let's give back a line. Uh, oh, a long. Um, hang on, hang on, hang on. Why is my brain hurting? This is a, 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 a it's an enumerable of long arrays. There we go. So we have each of our sequences here. Each of our sequences here. We can do an array of array. I'm just gonna leave it as an enumerable of long arrays here. Um, these are our sequences. Sequences. And then uh, for each one of these. I need to um, do their like extrapolation thing on it. Uh, Baldurvin Moten, Baldurvin Moten, thank you for following me today. Baldurvin Moten, I appreciate you greatly. I hope you enjoy your stay. I hope you enjoy watching me. Baldurvin Moten, thank you for following me. Thank you for the follow, Baldurvin Moten. Hope you're having a beautiful day. Mm. Okay, so we need to have... This is get, gets reduced down to like an int. So uh, essentially we do... Um, Really, I can do something like this. Um, select, extrapolate, um, and then sum is essentially what we want. Um, so this will end up being our answer. And I'll, I'll let me add in, an, and then uh, this will be result. Oh my goodness. Put split on this line here. Why is tabbing so hard? All right, and then this will be our result. So essentially, we just need a method public static long extrapolate that takes in a long array sequence and then returns something. Uh, and this will be a long. There we go. All right, so. The trick here is that we to have a sequence, every sequence sort of independent of each other. We find the, uh, we, add, we end up adding an element to the end of it, and then we return. Uh, so the next value in the history is 18. 18, 28, 68, and then we add those up. Is that right? 18, 28, 16? 18, 28, uh, 68. All right, so those are the numbers we're looking for. So I need to go through and build up this array here. Um, so we have the next sequence. So let's do a list of uh, long uh, next sequence equals um, new here. And we're gonna loop through sequence um, and we need to take the difference of each one um, here. So I could do it as a loop, but I discovered there's a zip thing here. So I can do sequence.zip. Check this out. See, this is this is the Haskell. This is my Haskell in me wanting to do this. Uh, sequence of one dot dot here. What is the, what? Does anyone know what this does? Last year I was trying to write it using just for loops. Um, this is going to give us back an uh, array uh, or two things. It's going to give us back an enumerable uh, of uh, long first, long second. Here. Um, zipped. All right. Uh, what is, you prefer? <laughs> you prefer RAR, the, the, the format there? All right. So what this does, because I'm starting on the second one, uh, zip is perfect for this. Yeah, sweet radish. That's exactly how I was feeling. Zip is perfect for this. And we can use, this is one of the times when I think an aggregate's going to be really nice here, actually. 
Um, so, so I can actually aggregate might not work well, actually, because I want to add things to this, this here. So let's do a four each. Uh, isn't it Windows? Zip is perfect for this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's like zip and Python. Exactly. Coding chemists, um, for each, uh, long first, long second, uh, in zipped like this. And so I can actually just substitute this in just so people see what it's doing here. Um, we can then say that next sequence dot add uh, second minus first, and we just build it up here. We build up this list. Um, and then if um, it's a shame that I'm making this be, let's make this list of long here list of long um list of long It'd be a little bit easier to do it as a list of long what is this complaining about now in the value of type in your world doesn't match the type of long why doesn't it like that can i just make this hang on I'm gonna make it an I enumerable. I enumerable of long. There we go. Let's make it an I enumerable. Um, it is, oh, oh, it's called Windows in Rust. Gotcha, gotcha. Exactly, it does pairwise of each one. So we start on the second one and then we can subtract them here uh, like this. Um, and now this, let's just make this an want this to be a list though why can't this be a list two lists smab do you know why this is complaining here wait i swear this is what i had and it didn't like it okay i swear this is what i had and it didn't like it a second ago all right that's fine i want it to be a list here um I just did a loop starting at one tracking previous. Yeah, we could do that too, where you have you 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 just do a loop. That's exactly what this does. It's just a loop, but now I don't have to track like the index and pull the first and second out. It's like a nice little thing here. Uh, Why well, the bracket in the wrong place? It's weird because all I did was change this from long array to a list of long. But maybe maybe I have a bra in the in the in the wrong spot. That's okay. So look look check that out check that out. I think this is just .NET build. I, I literally think it's just VS Code not understanding what's happening. Yeah, VS Code's just confused. It's VS Code, uh, if I do reload. Yeah, it, it's totally just VS Code uh, not understanding the change I made, which is really fascinating. Coosinator, Coosinator, thank you for following me today. We've got Coosinator, Coos, Coosinator, welcome to the stream. Coosinator, thank you so much for the follow. Happy, happy Saturday. I hope you're having a beautiful day. All right, so we have this sequence here. This is our next sequence. Um, and then... Once we have the next sequence, we need to extrapolate it. So, so there's a, I have, a, I have something slightly, um, I want to be able to, to do this extrapolate. It would be nice if this returned a list of long, there's something here that'd be nice if this returned a list of long, we're going to do an extrapolate. And then we, can we do a select, um, it's going to be a list. We want the last thing LS goes to the last element here. Uh, dot last dot sum. The last hang on. Yeah, so I want to get the last element of each one of these lists and then do a sum. Lo-fi craft, welcome back, my friend. Happy to have you here. So this needs to return. 
the end of the day, it's going to return our sequence with a new element added into it. Um, so we're going to extrapolate that extrapolate says add, I'm going to, I'm going to define extrapolate as adds, takes a list, takes a list and adds the adds the next sequence to the end, the next element in the sequence, to the end for convenience returns the modified list. All right, so that's what I'm gonna do here. It's gonna take the next element, gonna add it to it, and for convenience, it's gonna return the next element. And the reason I wanna do this is because I wanna be able to do lists of long. Um, uh, I want to essentially do the following. I wanna do extrapolate on my next sequence. So I need to extrapolate down. I need to extrapolate down here. And what we're gonna do though, is we're gonna say if next dot sequence only contains zeros. Um, so if it's all zeros, this is our base case. We can do this up here, I think. If next sequence contains all zeros, um, X, ooh. Go, uh, sorry, this should be sequence. Sequence, if it contains um, X is zero. So if they're all zeros, we return sequence, but we're gonna add, we're gonna add sequence dot add zero. We're gonna add a zero to the end. Um, Nick, thank you so much for, for doing that, doing that. All right, so if we have all zeros in it, we're gonna go ahead and add a zero to the end and then we return the sequence. And so we can extract what we take our sequence and then so we're cursively going to go down to our next sequence. It's going to find the next thing in this one. And then what we do is we look at the last two elements. Um, is that right? We add a zero to the end. And then for each one, we propagate up one. So we need to look at uh, the last element of this long last element like this. So this gets us our last element. And then we're going to add sequence um, of, we take the last element plus our last element. Sequence dot add. Does this make sense? And then we return for convenience, we return that. So we say, um, uh, uh, last element feels like the wrong word here. Um, I want to, I want to call it like our Delta, maybe our Delta here. So this is the difference between the last two and we added in. Um, okay. Extrapolate. I think let's write a test to make sure it extrapolates working the way we, we expect it to. Um, and we can do it uh, on this here. And we can even do it uh, on st something like this. All right, so public void test extrapolate. Day nine dot extrapolate. And then this takes in a list of uh, an array of longs. Can I make this a theory of inline data We'll make it taking along um, inputs and then long outputs. Well, inputs dot should be outputs. Extrapolate takes in a list. All right, we'll dot to list dot to array and then dot should be All right so let's do our inline data here and if our inputs are zero 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 should end up with zero 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 new long array new long array so we can we can test our inputs like this um zero 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 and then we'll go up one if it's all threes 
three, 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 three. Our input is zero, three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. We end up with this with an eighteen at the end. All right, um, like that. And really, I, I, all I care about is the last element being different. Uh, but let's run this test here. Why not match input and output types? Um, I can't pass a list in as an inline data. Um, can I do a list? All right. Does it let me do that? Hang on, hang on. If you're right, then I should. I think because list is an object, it won't let me do it. It, for your inline data, for your test data, these have to be specific data types. You can't do an object. It needs to be something that the compiler can, I believe, turn into a constant. Yeah, you can't put a, a list here in the inline data. Yeah, so that's why I was doing this, this thing here. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so so I don't, I don't quite under, it needs to be constants. The thing that I don't quite understand um, is that is this this is technically a constant somehow um so like my i don't quite understand that um i'm gonna change this so it's just long uh last element like this and then we're gonna do of the last element dot should be last element. all right i'm gonna do it this way um it'll it, this will just be easier for my brain the new last element is zero three 18 um we'll write a test here for each one of these one three one three six ten fifteen twenty one this should be 28 and then the next one 10 Oops, 10, 13, 16, 21, 30, 45. This should be 68, I believe. 68, there we go, 68. All right. I think this, uh, I think this test is sound. Let's make sure my project builds and we'll run it. Um, you'd build it in the arrange phase. Mm. Smab, that makes sense. That makes sense. List of long um, to test inputs. There we go. And then really this should be list of long results uh, to test. And we, then we do results of zero of the last element should be. Okay. And you know, so so arrange act assert maybe not probably opinion but for AOSA where the site validates your answer I'd spend all time solving it not writing tests can't foresee the hidden edge case that often happens in the large input um so I'm just testing uh that my output for I think that's totally fine Shesh Omara for me, I'm writing this thing extrapolate. I just want to make sure that my extrapolate function is working the way I want it to. Um, and so I could, I could, um, I don't have like a, so the way I'm doing it is I don't have a console program. So I can't, I can't like run my program right now. The whole thing is running through my test framework. Um, and this makes it easier for me, easier for me to debug. Um, I actually don't think that's an unpopular opinion. I think that's what most people are doing. Um, if I'm, if I'm Sesho Mara, I think most people are doing what you're suggesting. Um, yeah, big juicy. Welcome back to the stream. Long time. No, see, I hope you're having a beautiful day. Hope you're having a beautiful day, my friend. All right, let's run these tests just to verify that my extrapolate is doing what I think it's going to do. And hopefully we don't have an infinite loop. Hopefully if we do have an infinite loop, hopefully it's a, it's a recursion that crashes, but let's make sure I extract. Okay. 
All right, so our extrapolate passes. We're passing test one here. Um, I, I want to run it on my test input. I want to run it on my on my actual input. I need to, and I'm bad at this. Uh, I need to stop committing my input here. So I'm going to do a new a new file here, uh, input.txt, and I want to. And Smab, maybe you can help me with this. I want my public static string input to be equal to file.read all text of the input.txt. Is this really bad form in a unit test? Um, and to do this, I need to specify somewhere. Um, so like if I did .NET test here, will this, will this blow up? Um, a test failed through an exception, could not find that. Okay. It needs to copy it over into my testing directory. So, so I could. I could just manually put it in here, right? I could just move this in here. Um, dot net eight. Yeah, I could. Okay, so it needs to be in this directory. Move or copy input to bin debug. Bin debug. Hang on, hang on. To the other option is to make like a you set the current working directory, right? Tests bin debug net 8.0 and I know that there's a way I could package it yeah so in our solution it, or no in our tests um I would add in and I've done this before in our test projects I'd say oh there's a file you need to copy as part of the project um yeah so I could do that I think .NET test now will work though because I've manually put it there which is I'm going to do that for now all right, so now we don't fail. So let's see, I think this, we'll see if this fails um, or if this is running. Okay, so it looks like we're gonna be okay. Cause I accidentally have been caught, I've just been putting it in here, but this is gonna be better. It's gonna be better um, in the long run for us. But I should do, there's a preparation step I can do in this and I've done it before and I can go look at some examples uh, to do it, but I'm gonna be a little bit lazy. Uh, so that's why the full path to the file that works too. Um, but then I'd like expose my system file path, which doesn't really matter that much. All right, here we're going to do public, ah, public void test, uh, input part one, make it a fact, um, day nine part one on input, and this will fail. Still writing tests. These, yeah, it's true. It's true, Dramolks. It's true, true. Uh, make an environment called AOC input stuff from stuff them there. Ooh, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. This is gonna fail, and then it's gonna tell us when it fails. We'll get the output. We'll pass it in, and then we can add that in here. Um, the output was this guy. Submit. Oh, right. one gold star. One gold star, we got it. Edith Thians, Adi Thians, Adith Thians, Adith Thians. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Adith Thians. Welcome. Welcome aboard Adith Thians 21. Welcome. Thank you for following. Thank you for following me. Adith Thians. Let me know how to pronounce that. Welcome aboard. Welcome to Captain Coach Academy. Thank you guys for the star for being here points at all uh to to being here to witness this moment schedule 125 points to all you beautiful people out there um let's go ahead and rerun oh i'm gonna put this in here rerun it just so i can get that green get, i want to get that green light give me that green light green means go that means we're good to go dram how you been buddy welcome back to the stream how's how's your project coming along status and so now I won't be committing my input file here. All right. Git. Oops. 
Get commit dash M. <laughs> Redeem that Lambo. Project come along well. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, this is a feat. Implement. Uh, day nine. Part one. We'll push that on up. Uh, it's pretty straightforward solution. I actually am not sure if um, this this recursive solution is nice. We're going to see it probably won't work for the second one. There's probably going to be something crazy we have to do here. Um, all right, part two, everybody. Let's let's do it. Um, of course, it would be nice to have even more history included in your report. Surely it's safe to just extrapolate backwards as well, right? For each history, repeat the process of finding differences until the sequence of differences is entirely zero. Then rather than adding a zero to the end and filling in the next value of each previous sequence, you should instead add a zero at the beginning of a sequence, then fill in the new first values for each previous sequence. In particular, here is what the third example history looks like when extrapolating them back in time. Adding the new values on the left side of each sequence from the bottom to top eventually reveals the new leftmost history five. Doing this for the remaining example data above results in previous values of negative three for the first history and zero for the second history. And add all three, you get two. Um, is it really that simple? We just put something, we just, we put the first element this time. So we do, <laughs> uh, um, okay, we can do that. Uh, 30s is quite generous. Um, all right, you have 30s, 30 seconds to finish part two, Smab says, 30 seconds to finish part two. Um, let me not overthink this. We should, all right, so my extrapolate will now, um, elements in the sequence and, and to the end and beginning. You just add the first one and the last one. Um, sequence dot insert zero zero. Um, and then extrapolate. We're gonna hang on, hang on. <laughs> We're gonna add insert at index zero. Sequence of zero. We need the delta. Delta last. And delta first. And this is going to be zero. Is that it? Um. Is that the whole thing? All right, let's try. Part two. Part two. Um, we extrapolate and then we take the first element of each list and sum them. Is that it? Apilast, uh, ap apila to so to tusba. Apila tusba. Apila, welcome to the stream. Hello, hello. Um, I think this is what they want. Let's try, let's try, let's try to test here part two uh, to validate it. Oh, I did, uh, uh, shouldn't it be plus? I need to do a minus, I need to do a minus. Hang on, I have a bug, I have a bug. Uh, um, minus first delta, so we go, we, we subtract instead of add. Um, I suppose I could have switched it so we have like an extrapolate right and extrapolate left. Yeah, this is a weird one. Um, negative pancake, <laughs> what a cool name. I Look, don't take my pancake away, that's my pancake. How dare you try to negate my pancake. Negative pancake, what a name. Why would you want to take it away? Cause it's always better with a pancake. Why do you want to negate 
my food negative pancake welcome to the stream happy to have you here on this beautiful day okay uh pertinent song i'm glad you're here i'm glad you're here my friend okay uh i needed to subtract it okay so now adding the new values uh in the history we get five hang on hang on uh together produces two adding all three values together produces two Hang on, adding the new value on the left side of each one from the bottom to the top eventually reveals the new topmost value of five. Remaining previous values of negative three and zero, we add them together and we get two. And we get it two. All right. Part two. And I could test the begin new beginning, new last here, probably. Oh no. What? I have a I have a stack overflow, I think. Dot net build. Uh sorry, dot net test. Do I have a stack overflow? When it does this, that usually means I have a stack overflow. Um I failed. It took me more than 30 seconds, so I, I apologize. I apologize. People want me to have um test extrapolate. Oh, oh, I didn't mean to, I didn't need to extrapolate twice. Hang on. Uh, list. Uh, next sequence. Hang on. Next sequence equals extrapolate. Next sequence. Or I really just need to do this. And then... All right, is that it? All right, we're gonna test it on our full input now. Um, test sample input. It did take me more than 30 seconds, so I'm sorry. I'm sorry to be a disappointer. Part two. <laughs> I wrote. I wrote a. I wrote a bug. You guys got me all all set up here for for be too excited now. I, I just let me embarrass myself. Um, I didn't. You're correct. <laughs> Boy, I forgot to put a two there. All right. Um, what does this say? One thousand ninety-seven. Boom. What? What was the hard part about that? Um, hmm. Thank you for the stars. <laughs> Thank you for the stars. Uh, you didn't test the second part. I didn't. All right. Got two stars. Thank you for the stars. Points at all for being here to witness this moment. Education 250 points to everybody. Um, Usually there's something interesting about the second part. That this, that was maybe the most disappointing second part. Yet. Did anyone else feel a little bit gypped on this one? <laughs> this is just, look, this is Eric. Eric lulling us into a false sense of security lulling us into a false sense of security uh for for tomorrow which is probably going to be something horrific um yeah yeah i could just do a reverse um i could just do a reverse on part one do a reverse and then do the same thing Um, or maybe, maybe, uh, I bet people have done some really cool visualizations for this one. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, Sorum, Sue Orm. Welcome to the stream. My friend, happy to have you here. I forgot to do a what today. What are we doing today? We are, uh, working on the advent of code day nine. We just finished day nine. Um, 
It's a great way to test out your coding stuff. If you're not sure what advent of code is, it is a programming challenge. A set of programming puzzles, a new puzzle comes out every day, two puzzles in fact. You get a puzzle, you solve a puzzle, it unlocks the second puzzle for the day, collect your stars. Uh, um, but yeah, this is, this one was um, not bad. This one was fun. Um, people have built actual difference engines. Someone made a really cool one like in the early 90s. Very cool, very cool. Um, yeah, it's not bad. It's a fun little project. The second part of this one, I feel like was a little, a little disappoint. I, I, I feel a little disappointed. Well, I was thinking I would reverse it, but, um, my first, I was like, well, let me just add something to the beginning and then I can sum up the first and I don't lose, I don't lose the first and last part. I guess I could have done that too. Let's get a commit in. Get, sta get, get status. Um, modified day eight, apparently get commit dash M feet implement day nine part two. Uh, just did a reverse on the output. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Well, we done, we, we did it pretty simple. Um, all right. We have, uh, two, uh, we have one. Let's look at Nick's solution here. Nick, thank you for sharing this. Nick for, oh, well, let's look at Smabs. I always like to look at Smabs first. Smab gets, Smab is like my first, my first follower, follower ever. So. Uh, we're gonna look at smabs first uh advent of code get pull yeah you don't actually need to i so smab i was expecting to need them in the next part uh if i'm being completely honest i was expecting him flat tire with a ph ph flat tire it's a <laughs> it's a flat Tire, you know it's flat with a pH. Yeah, we've got a flat tire following me today. Flat tire, thank you so much for the follow. Welcome to the crew. Welcome to Captain Coach Academy. Uh, let's open up day nine here. Let's look at Smab's solution. Do 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 do. Do, 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 do. Day nine. This one was disappointingly easy. Day nine like StarCraft. That's right. Tuber, how you doing, buddy? Tuber Tugger. Or, I know Tuber Tugger, you told me that's pronounced Captain Coder. Is that correct? Um, Shows all the files changed. Yeah, I did a pull uh, on it. Uh, thank you for sharing it. Is it possible to write code to improve his musical abilities? Probably not. Probably not. We need, we need an auto-tune button. We need an auto tune bum. Seek a Dell. Is it Seek a Dell? Seek a Dell. I would like to welcome you to the crew now. Seek a Dell. Thank you for following me. Thank you for the follow, Seek a Dell. Kev Prime. I'm so sorry you have to listen to that. Folks, folks, for listening, for having to suffer. For having to suffer through all the singing. 500 points to all you beautiful people out there. All right, let's look at, at Smabs. Ooh, ooh, Smab using the, 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 this is like alien, the type alias here. Um, sequence here is actually gonna be a list of ints. Sequences, sequences, how do we spell sequence? Sequences uh, is a list of lists. All right, so we have a sequence and sequences. Nice use of that. I personally would find, I personally find this, it's just for you. I would find this confusing to be like, well, what the heck is a sequence? Maybe not. You hover over it and you get it. I always found type A this as being a little bit confusing personally. Um, Tuber says, what everyone doesn't know, this is already coders singing with all programming help he can get. Don't want to hear his monotone beeps that are coming out in reality. Yeah, it's already auto-tuned. Uh, just, it's, it's the auto-tuned version already um all right you blind up here so load histories um they were called histories that's right load histories um you it adds int this is an extension you've written this is an extension you've written 
Uh, string S separator. Gotcha, gotcha. I lo that's cute. I like that. You have an as T here. Ooh, I really like this. I really like that uh, helper there, Smab. Might have to steal that. Borrow. Borrow. Okay. Um, oh, extrapolate. Last. Oh, uh, yeah, I should have done last there. Extrapolate, last, and you add them. In this direction, you add. In the other direction, you reverse. Yep, reverse. And then subtract. I like that. That's a that that's nice. That's nice here. Um that is nice. I like it. Alright, let's look at your extrapolate. Nice and short and simple. Uh sequences is a list of lists of integers. And sequence is a list of integers. Yeah, this I understand why you did it for the 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 making it a little bit easier to read here it makes this look really pretty differences here so you calculate the differences so this is what was like my sub list this is my sub list here um and so your sequence sequences um so you take the last list that's in your sequences and you set your differences equal to this empty one can we take this out? Why? Oh, you need it in the while loop here. You need it in the while loop here. Could you do this, Mab? Does it let you do that? Is there, could you, could you choose to not initialize it? Um, this would be, this would be how I would have written this without the initial initialization here, since you're initializing it here. You still have to declare it to use it in the, it, the, conditional down here in your while um in this case yes gotcha i might have done that it doesn't really matter um and then because the do make it always hit that last part yeah um then we loop through this is what my zip was doing my zip was doing this and you're just adding those into your differences and then we add the differences into our sequences. Yeah, so we pull it out here and we loop well differences doesn't have, if it has anything that's not a zero. Okay, I like that, I like that. Um, you, what's interesting here to me, apparently, the adding of the zero was not necessary. Eventually it's gonna get down to that anyway. And then you you just add in there. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. I like it. I like it. Sweet Radish, thank you for enqueuing yours. Nice. Really short, really simple, beautiful solution. Smab for sharing points. Add Smab 500 points. Thank you for sharing your solution with us. Whoa. Nice, nice solution. Thank you for the woe tuber. Apila Tosba. Apila Tuzba. Sorry, I don't know how to pronounce it. Apila Tuzba. Thank you for following me today. Oh, Apila Tuzba. Welcome to the crew. Thank you for the follow. Happy to have you. Ghost Man. Have you met Ghost Man? One five one six followed me today, you know, Ghost Man. Thank you for following, Ghost Man. Thank you for the follow. Happy to have you here on this beautiful day. I did a version passing in lambdas as well, but it didn't, didn't read as well. This reads beautifully. Uh, did you go back? I'm assuming you went back and you renamed these just because lists of ints and list of lists of of ints certainly looks much worse um I, i'm assuming that you had this first and then you decided to come back and do that um yeah really nice i, I like this solution a lot um nice and short and simple uh in some places from the beginning uh, okay in, in some from the beginning gotcha gotcha all right 
Smab, thank you for sharing. I really love your solution. Nice, really clean, really clean solution. All right, let's see here. Coding chemist, let's check it out. Coding chemist sharing on our Discord channel. Folks, we do have a Discord. If you're not on the Discord, I'd love to see it. I uh, had a mix of list and I enumerable refactor to all be the same. Gotcha, gotcha. All right. Um, we do have a Discord you guys can get on. Gotcha. Oh, did I miss you, Nick? I, unintentional, unintentional miss. Unintentional miss. It's because Smab isn't in here. All right, let's go to, to Nick's first. It's Coding Chemist. Uh, you get, uh, look, look, look. You in the back. Pay attention. Yeah, th just keep it. Just keeping you on your toes, Nick. Just keeping you on your toes. Uh, this link doesn't work, or I copied it wrong. I copied it wrong. I copied that as part of it, I think. All right, here we go. Um, for one today, easier than I expected and learning something new. Um, all right, so your solution says go through all of the histories, list of long, list of list of long. Uh, this is the diff diffs. Then we have a generate diffs. Ooh, this is nice. A nice little I enumerable generate diffs. Um, and you pull out, you yield I minus I minus one. So you take the element and you subtract the last one. So you start at the second element and you pull them out here. Nice. So, so this is what my zip was doing essentially. Nice with the yield here. So it's lazy. Um, well, the diffs, the sum of the diffs is not equal to zero. This feels expensive. I guess it's not crazy expensive. Um, you're summing up all of them using a short circuit like any or all would be a bit faster. It doesn't matter. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I'm feeling like this. Um, this is a little bit tricky here because you really want to see that they're all not zero. Yeah, yeah, topologist, there's an input there that could get you going. Um, yeah, so so just a little little thing there. Uh, hex tree, that makes sense. Anyone would be much better. Any would be much better than all. It ex exits earlier, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Globe Rambler, thank you for the follow. Globe Rambler, welcome aboard today. Thank you for following me. Globe Rambler, thank you for the follow. Or is it Globe R Rambler? Um, and then we get the next values plus last diff. So you get the last element and that's the next value. Uh, we add in the diffs and then we generate the next one as we're going. So we generate it up. Um, all has to test every any until it finds a match. Um, only wrote, uh, flat tires has only wrote a couple pretty simple automation scripts myself, mostly only cert, run searches, coworkers codes, any of us where to start to learn more. Um, do you have a, is, do you want to do like C sharp? Is there a language you have in mind? I personally uh, would recommend a book called the C sharp player's guide. Uh, I find it to be one of the best books of all time for learning programming in general, but specifically in C it's programming in general, but C sharp, C sharp players guide. Sorry to get distracted on you, Nick. Nick, I just, this is important. This is my favorite learn to program book of all time. It's absolutely fabulous. Uh, flat tire. Good question. Um, I don't write C sharp and I don't apologize. This is important. Yeah, I don't write C sharp and I don't apologize. That's okay. Kev Prim, Kev Prime, that's totally fine. Uh, no one's, no one needs to write C sharp. It's just, it happens to be one of my languages that I enjoy. Um, okay. Um, shouldn't any, should, uh, Smab, wouldn't all exit as soon as the first one is false? Any and all exit early so long as so like in this case this will exit early as soon as it finds one that's not not uh true okay i just wanted to to make sure um 
just to check back. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, so any and all are good. Uh, short circuiting ones. It depends on what your condition is, of course. Um, then we come through here. A flat tire, I hope that's helpful. If you have another language in mind, uh, let us know. Um, I'm sure there's some people here with other suggestions. And I have some other ones as well um, for, for Python. And then we loop through here. All right, not bad. And then you have part one and part two. So you have the first and the last size sides there. Nice solution, Nick. Nice solution, Nick. Thank you for sharing. Um, let's see here. Coding chemists. Let's try not to skim it. If you aren't ready to assemble, are you even really coding? Look, look, it's true. You're not. The answer is no, you're not. Uh, you're not really coding. Uh, coding chemist solution. I'm going to pull this up. Doing it in TypeScript. Doing it in TypeScript. Um, I believe this is TypeScript. There it goes. Detected it. All right. Coding chemist here. Going to read these in. Splitting on new lines. Splitting on new lines. Um, dropping lines that have no elements. This is removes empty elements. And then we map our sequences here into a parse int. So splitting on the space. So we parse our data in. We get our sequences. Um, and then we return sequences. Okay. Um, perfect. Perfect. Find next number recursive. That's what I did here. Let's look at this. Uh, Nathaniel Bumpo, yours got, it should be added to the queue, even though it block it, it, it got upset there. Once you've been here a few, a little bit longer, it'll stop doing that. But let me give you a permit just, just, just in case you want to post another link. Thank you for sharing your link with us in Rust. I'm looking forward to that. All right. This looks similar to mine. Um, differences of slice one. So slice one is saying start at the second one. So this is kind of like my zip. Start at the second element and then we map it with the index number and we do number minus the uh, sequence at that index. Um, I think this is finding the differences of all of them. So num would be the number at this position and then index zero would happen to be, yeah. So, so this is cool. This is a cool way to do it. This is kind of what my zip is doing. It's essentially what my zip is doing. And then we say, if, um, if the difference is, is if diff is triply equal to differences, so yours is saying if all of the differences are the same, we stop. We stop. So yours doesn't go all the way to the zero case. Yours doesn't go all the way to the zero case, which is fine because you know if they're all the same across, the next row is going to be all zero. So I like that. So you're saying if they're all the same number. Oh, you, you said right here. We just create, we, we add, uh, we increase the last one by the differences here. And then you recursively do this on the differences one here. Um, and then we you're going to do the same thing where we take the next difference and we add it to the end. Oh, this is an append because we're in JavaScript, right? This is append. Okay, nice. Not bad. Kev Prime tried assembly for like two months. It was difficult outside of reverse engineering knowledge. I couldn't just by the time it was going to take me to learn. Still haven't gone back. And that was a few years ago. I salute anyone who tortures himself enough to get through assembly. Yeah. Um, I've done, if I'm doing low level stuff, I usually will be in C and then I, I write a little bit of assembly if I have to, but usually I just in C. Um, it's acting on a number, not a string. Okay. So this is, you're actually increasing the last element by the difference and then, oh, it's cause we're returning here. So we're done. So you're just increasing the last number by the difference is what it looks like. And then you keep those all the way up as you add them together. I think I understand that here. Um, they, they help you ace it. Remember the int code problem from a few years ago? I've only did admin of code 2023, so I haven't seen that one. Um, you loved it, Kev Prime. Uh, part one here. Okay, so um, we find the sequence and we sum them together here. Not bad, not bad. And then this one, you just reverse the sequences. Yeah. Just reversing the sequences uh, will work as well. 
Uh, very nice, very nice. Coding Chemist, thank you so much for sharing points. Add Coding Chemist 500. And I think, Nick, I forgot to add points to you. Uh, 500 points to you as well. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing your code. Um, Umer Paracha says, Hi, can you explain why we use interface even if we have one class? Um, you, uh, uh, it's going to depend on your implementation. I don't know if I would necessarily do it uh, that way. Um, an interface is supposed to hide the implementation and define just a contract. Um, here we're looking at a Pila Tosba's solution here. Um, it looks like it's in C sharp. Pila Tosba. Thank you so much for sharing points. Add a Pila Tosba. 500 points, my friend of Maxwell. Welcome back to the stream. Um, Umur Paracha. Interfaces, if to answer your question a little bit, interfaces can be useful for thinking about the interaction of um, objects together uh, without having to worry about the details of their implementation. Implementation. If we have only one class that implements it, maybe not the best place uh, to use an interface. UG, I think there's something called like the rule of three. Um, I don't know if it's like a standard rule, but rule of three says once you've done something three times, it's a good time to do the abstraction. Um, all right, Apila Tospa. Here, here's Apila Tospa solution. Uh, um, get the input part two. Okay, so in our main, you're just doing part two at the end here, but part one, let's take a look at it. Um, you pull in the histories here. Um, you're gonna pull out each of it. So this is just building up your histories, building up your histories here. Um, and we have an extrapolate on your history's number and then you're gonna pass in some so you can modify it inside of this method um and then get it back so anyone doesn't know we can you have a reference argument here this is saying that pass in the pointer to sum because in our extrapolate we're gonna modify the value of sum uh, which is fine um so my guess here is, and without even looking at it, um, we're looking at the history of numbers here. Extrapolates a void. I might have made this return a number. In my opinion, having this return a number and doing sum plus equals like this, rather than setting the, the sum like that, might have been my, my version here. Um, but that's okay. There's nothing wrong with what you've done here. I find this a bit odd personally all right and then number two um you pass in a true to extrapolate probably to specify that we're going the other direction let's take a look here uh what a heck what a heck if, if we if we fail what a heck i like that uh this is an interesting way to do this this is an interesting way to do this i say this is our termination block checking for if we should even continue so this is like our exception checks here Otherwise, we're going to do a step. We're going to do a step here. And I see, I see your extrapolate's going to go in here. Is this so that you can do tail call? Is this technically a tail call optimization? Because this is at the end here and there's only one recursive call. Uh, Dev Donut, welcome back to the stream. I sense so you're passing in like an accumulator here. This is kind of acting as an accumulator as you go. Um, so that might be why you've done it in this way. I hope you're doing well, Dev Donut. What have you been up to, my friend? Nice to see you again. All right, so our results here is going to, this is our sum, where I say take the last element, add it in, get a list here. Um, we're finding the differences. We find the differences here, and then we extrapolate on that one. So this is sort of recursively going down inside. Uh, playing lots of fighting games lately after work. Gotcha, gotcha. Anyone in particular? This is an interesting solution. This is an interesting solution. Um, it, it's a little bit tricky for me to wrap my brain completely around what you've, uh, what all the purpose of this is uh, compared to just returning the the size of then. But it has to do with you passing that thing down as an accumulator. You could have just done a long without the rep. You could have just done a long, and at the end 
return the result. But that's just like my opinion, man. Nice solution, nice solution. All right, and then this case, we're swapping between is even and not even. So is, is even, not even. Um, we go through this results plus equals is even numbers of zero or negative numbers of zero. So we take the the first let's see Cadell, thank you for checking out the learn c sharp got a couple things there that i recommend next draft we're also building up the result now but we're propagating is even down um on our result what is this is even doing i'm trying to understand um if we're is even we have the first numbers zero otherwise we're subtracting the first numbers and then we loop through and we add it at the end we still extrapolate to the right side get your part two here part two we pull them in we go for every number history's numbers i'm trying to understand extrapolate two is doing here i don't quite understand what this is even is doing because we're alternating here um extrapolate two next next is the list that we've produced um numbers of zero it is the formula to find extrapolated value. The formula is I from zero, N minus one, minus one, starts R to A. It's every other one you're adding or subtracting. I don't. The first number. Oh, 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 gotcha, gotcha. It's the first number in every line. I see, I see. I apologize. I was. I was confusing this. I thought you were doing something with that number here. You're not, you're not, you're still subtracting that. This is the value that you're adding in um, at the beginning. Got it, got it, got it. This is interesting. It's interesting here, this solution. Thank you for sharing it. Um, really cool. Very, it's different than any of the other ones I've seen so far. Um, yeah, I was, I was misunderstanding what it was doing here. I thought it was pulling a number out and then using that as the difference. That's not what it's doing though. Um, neat, neat. All right, excellent, excellent. Thank you for sharing. Sweet Radish, let's check out your solution next. Really cool solution. Sweet Radish. Um, what do we got here? Void main. What language are we in here? Void main. Is this, uh, this looks like Java. Looks like we're in Java here. I uh, had to cope with the lack of zip. Had to cope with the lack of zip. Yeah, it looks like we're in Java. Um, there are some, some, um, let's see. In Java, Google has some really great functional libraries that you can use that provide stuff like zip. And so I've used that before. Nathaniel Bumpo, have you met Nathaniel Bumpo? He is following me today. You know Nathaniel. Thank you for following today. Thank you for the follow, Nathaniel. Um, I appreciate you being here. Okay, so we go for every line in the input. Um, can't produce in a decreasing range. Gotcha, gotcha. So we have our array list here. We're gonna get into array, uh, which is I'm assuming takes a line and just converts it to a array of nums. And you're gonna add that array to your list. So this is like your sequence here. And we're gonna loop over it. And we're gonna say if any of the numbers inside of our stream are not zero, we need to keep going. We need to keep going. All right. So this is, we're gonna be adding to the end of this stream, I believe. Um, what we're going, yes, list of list.addNums equal, uh, nums equal diff. 
This is uh, my personal preference would be to not do this on the same line. Uh, and here, this can be really confusing to some people because you're doing an assignment and evaluation at the same time. That said, you can do this. There's nothing wrong with it. I personally would have done nums equals diff here and then nums. I think that what you did there is totally fine. I just think it's really confusing to have a line of code doing two things, two things at the same time. Um, and that's totally fine though. Um, my personal preference. So we're going to allocate a new uh, list for our diffs, an array uh, here. And we go through and we calculate our diffs and we add it to the end here. And then this is going to come back up here and say, is it all zeros? If it's not all zeros, we keep going. So this is building up our sequences as we go down. And then answer one, um, we just sum them up. And then answer two, you use a reduce here. Um, I deleted my change. Uh, I deleted my change. Um, yeah, so we should be back at uh, the beginning here of it. Yeah, flat, flat tire, I deleted my change. Um, but our second solution, two minus size one, we're gonna reduce, to do a reduce rather than a sum, backwards okay so we're going back we're subtract okay we go through and do it that way gotcha gotcha not bad yeah iteration reverse into the same thing but with subtraction it's a, this doesn't read as nice um as just a, the reverse of it good this is a nice really uh uh this is a great solution uh sweet radish awesome solution here i don't know if i get did i give you points for submitting your solution yet points add sweet radish 500 points thank you so much for being here thank you for sharing welcome back g nice to have you here um nice simple really simple solution i like it uh scripty yeah well, i finished it already we did we did we done did it we're looking at solutions now uh sweet radish thank you for that nathaniel we got a, a solution in, in Rust. Exclamation point. Uh, you got to do exclamation point points to see the points. Sweet Radish. Yeah, I'm not an affiliate on Twitch. I don't have an affiliate status on Twitch. Um, so you don't get points. You can't subscribe. I don't get emotes. Um, we'll take a look at yours on in, 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 the, in a moment here, G. Yeah, so I don't have... You'll also notice there's no subscription button and there's no points because I'm not an affiliate. I'm not an affiliate, but look, there I am going into the void. This is one of my favorite things to do here is do a whoa. Do a whoa. whoa. That said, since I'm not an affiliate, and if you want some Captain Coder emotes, you can support my favorite streamers. They help host my Captain Coder emotes, um, which look like this. What? Doyle. <laughs> seems good. Sweet Rad says soon. Seems good, yeah. Into the void and I spilt coffee. I spilt coffee, which is a bummer. Let me wipe that up real quick. Whoa. <laughs> Amazing, into the void. But yeah, I don't want the ads on my channel. Um, all right, folks, we're gonna close that down. Okay. Yeah, so it's all it's it's all it's all bot points. It's all bot points, so it's not channel points. You can't use them for any it's not true. You can use them for stuff. If you scroll down, there's some commands that do things with them. Um, but yeah, I just don't want the I don't want ads on my on my stream. All right, let's look at Nathaniel's here. Nathaniel points and Nathaniel 500 points. Thank you for, so much for sharing this. Let's get the raw version here. This is a rust, the rust analyzer now, and now it's going to think everything is rust. Okay. So, um, a vec, a vec of RC, vec of I64. Uh, I don't know what RC is. Um, but it looks this is this looks like it's gonna be our lists uh, of things here. Gee, thank you for enqueuing that. That's gonna be really helpful for me. I appreciate it. All right, so we're gonna parse our lines in, and then we're gonna have our differences. What's so so here? Here is one of the things about today's is a reference counter. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Cool. One of the things that I uh, is disappointing about today's puzzle is everyone kind of has the same solution. That said, I really liked um, a pila toast uh, toast buzz. A pila, can I call you a pila? Their solution was uh, pretty unique um, to me. 
I really, really liked your solution. It was very unique compared to everyone else's I'm seeing here. Um, so one thing that is a little bit disappointing to me about today's puzzle, appeal is okay, gotcha, thank you, um, is just how similar these all are. It's like find the differences, um, build this thing up. So we build up the differences and then we just process, which says, okay, now that we have the differences, just add them up. And part two is, all right, now just reverse them and then add and then, or subtract in this case, subtract. So it's like, the puzzle isn't that interesting. It's not bad. It's not a bad puzzle. You have to write something interesting. I just feel like for for day nine, look, I, I should shut up. I, sh I need to stop because tomorrow, tomorrow is going to be painful because I'm like, D this is what I'm saying. Eric, Eric knows. Eric's like, ha ha, we're going to get him. We're going to, I'm going to get him. I'm going to get him. Lull him into a false sense of security and then pow, pow, give him, give him, give him a big old, like, uh, uh, tomorrow I wouldn't be surprised if we have a, uh, like, uh, Brett first search or something, which isn't, isn't hard, but is like gonna, or something where you need to do some kind of, uh, memoization or something dynamic programming tomorrow, folks. We'll see. I don't know. Um, but yeah. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Let's focus. Nathaniel. Here we go. Um, we're gonna do the diff nine hour puzzle tomorrow. I know Smab. That's exactly right. That, uh, and, and so. I need to, all right, I'm gonna put my disclaimer out now. I'm gonna put my disclaimer out now on this, the the 15th, I believe. Let me look. I believe it's the 15th, it might be the 16th actually. The 15th, so Friday, this coming Friday, I'm gonna put my disclaimer out right now. Friday, um, I have to, we're gonna be raiding into Keybind. Keybind's doing a charity stream. So we have a limited amount of time on Friday the 15th. So, so I'm probably gonna be be stopping a little bit early there. So we probably won't finish on stream the 15th, and then the uh, 19th I won't be able to do it either because uh, there's some stuff I got to take care of on the 19th. So I'm putting my disclaimer out there now. Putting my disclaimer out there now so people aren't like, oh, you just got scared of the puzzles. No, no, the 15th and the 19th I haven't seen them yet, but those two days, unfortunately, I got some stuff going on. Uh, exactly, Bal Durvin. I was thinking uh, we're gonna get some some kind of pathfinding thing going on. Fifteenth is where it usually goes to pieces. Gotcha. Okay, uh, let's keep looking at this, uh, Nathaniel. Let's keep looking at your solution here, Nathaniel. Thank you for sharing it. Um, need to use RC because of the ownership rules and Rust means I can't refer to things in the vec while adding to the same vec. Gotcha. That's pretty normal. E even if you're doing like a for each loop, it doesn't want you to modify things you're looping through. Gotcha though, that's kind of cool. Can get around it a little bit there. It's one of those things where it's like you have this uh, safety, but you can, I like when they just have the safety built in, but you can do stuff like this to get around it. Um, and so we're gonna build up all of our differences here. So we build up all of our differences. And then at the end of the day, it's pretty cool, pretty cool little system. So we loop. Um, we're gonna when we have all zeros when we have all zeros we break so we iterate through all of our elements and we break if we get there and then our differences we're just gonna add in uh the the set of differences here right um if they're all new push rc clone v equals v2 okay and then we're gonna build up our differences. And then this outer loop is going through all of our puzzle inputs, goes through all of our puzzle inputs, gotcha. The diff here is just doing, um, this is what my zip was doing. Oh, oh, there's your zip, there's your zip. You do the zip and then you map. Oh, I, that's what I should have done. Yo, that's what I should have done. I like that, I like that. I did my select. That's what I should have done. Zip and then select. I like that. I should. I could have done sequence. Dot zip. Could have done this. Oh, I like that so much better. Dot select. Uh, long first. Uh, well now I have to do pair. It's not quite as nice. Pair dot. Uh, first. Minus a uh, second. Pair minus first. I could have done this. 
Um, and this would be next sequences. That's what I should have done. Yeah. Oh, I should have done that, Nathaniel. Nice, nice. Yeah, I should have done this. I should have done this. Windows, the sliding iterator, um, except you can specify the size of it. I really like that. I really like that. Um, really cool little thing there. I should have done this. I really like what you did there with the Lambda, with the map, to, to collect, and then you pull it out. Very nice. And then at the end of the day, we just iterate through, um, and then we do a fold here where we sum it up. And in your case, you said the order here is a plus, and then down here is a minus. Um, never went back to change it, Smab. Yeah, I, I should have. I should have known. Yarg! I should have known. Really nice solution, Nathaniel. I really like this. I need to do more rust. This, Nathaniel, this just making me, uh, make, makes, makes, makes me want to get rusty. I want to become a, a, a rustation. A rustation. Uh, making me feel feel like I want to get rusty in there. Nathaniel, thank you for sharing that excellent, excellent solution. Let's look at hex trees next. Hex tree points. Add hex tree. Uh, 500 points. Thank you for sharing your solution with a Python solution. Very nice. Ooh, nice and short, nice and tight. Nice and tight little. I love myself a tight little solution. Um, we'll close that. Reader inputs. Python is just made for these 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 puzzles. I love. Uh, maybe I should do some of these in Python. I just like C. I just I'm trying to get better at C sharp. Is really what it comes down to. Um, line strip split, and then we do it. We turn it to an int here. So map is like select in C sharp for anyone who's not familiar with it. So it's saying to. Um, for every line, we're going to read every line in here, and then we're going to make sure that line has no white space on the beginner end. We're going to split it into individual integers, and then we're going to apply it the int here. It's going to turn it into a list, and then we have a sequences. These are all of our sequences here. Get next term. This is what I call the extrapolate, and the name extrapolate just comes from the name in the puzzle. Get next term here. We start off with our rows. Um, this, what does this do in Python? Is this just saying this is a copy? Is this a copy here uh, of, of that original one? I'm not sure. Uh, what does this syntax mean um, in Python? I guess I could, do I have Python in so I probably could test it. Python uh, sec equals one, two, three, four, S E. I meant to put, so it makes a copy of it. Uh, hex tree, thank you. Thank you. It makes a copy. Control Z doesn't exit, exit. There we go. Makes a copy of it. So this is our row. So this is, we're going to build it down. We're going to say, well, uh, they're not all zeros. Um, so we loop through this for X in. I love, I love, uh, I love list comprehensions. I love list comprehensions. Does C sharp have list comprehensions? I don't think it does. Um, I, that's something I do like in Python is the list comprehension. It says for X and rows, uh, we find all of them. We say, make sure all of them are this. Does this do, I believe by default, this is a generator as well. So it's lazy. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. I believe this is gonna be lazy because it's technically a generator. It's not actually making a list. It's uh, a generating this thing. And then all will, well, it'll stop right away. Okay, cool, cool. They're all zeros. Um, if they're not all zeros, then we do the new row here where we go through, and this is what the zip uh, on mine was doing, where we say, okay, get the first element, the element that's after this one minus the element that we're at. Uh, range of, uh, we don't go through the whole range though, so, because we don't want it to go past the end. And then we add that row here, and then uh, you're gonna add a zero after we get out of this while loop, you did what I do where we add a zero at the end. Um, have moon. Welcome back to the stream. Uh, yesterday we did advent of code day eight, part ones and two, part one and two. Uh, I'm doing absolutely wonderful today. Half moon. I hope you're doing well. Uh, I would hope you're doing well as well, uh, but welcome back. What have you been up to? What have you been up to? All right. So now 
for I in range our rows minus two. What is, oh, oh, our step is negative one. Our step is negative one. That's what we're saying here. So we're gonna go, we're gonna generate, this is our starting position and then our step here. That's cool, that's cool. Um, and we're gonna append that in there and then we return rows zero of minus one. All right, so we get the last thing out here. Um, and then we're gonna sum up our next term for all of our sequences. So we get the next term for each one of our things and we print out the total part two. Um, does this reverse our sequence? Let's look at that Python. Some of these little things here. Two, three, four, sec of minus one. Boom, that's reverse. All right, so we do it in, we do it forward and then we do it backwards for part two. This is why part two is so interesting because there's nothing really different or interesting about it. Um, Nice solution, Hextree. Excellent, excellent solution. Have Moon, I'm doing really good doing some drawing in order to start modeling. Nice, nice. You're, you're gonna do some 3D modeling? All right, Hextree, thank you for sharing that. Um, rate my solution, Bal Durvin. Let's check out yours, Bal Durvin. What do we got here? I really shouldn't open these live on stream. There could be something terrible in them. I should be opening them on another stream. Um, what language are we in here? Uh, this looks like Rust. Is this Rust? Looks like Rust. Um, I know, I know. I'm just saying people, I'm not saying you would. I'm just saying in my mind, I make, I'm making a mental note. I'm making a mental note. I should do it. Um, <laughs> Bell Durbin, thank you for sharing your code. We'll, we'll find out here. Uh, Bell Durbin. 500 points for sharing. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for sharing your solution with us. Um, it's a rust, a rust solution here. Um, run on sample, then we run on our input. Run. Run, we build up our sequences. So this is our parsing. So the parsing on this one is so simple. This is like a this should this is kind of what day one parsing should feel like in my mind. You know what? This would have been a perfect. Does anyone? How? What do people think? I think this would have been a perfect day one puzzle. I think this would have been a perfect day one puzzle actually. That's why it's. I think that's why it's so weird for day nine. It's not a bad puzzle. It's just it feels a little too easy for day nine. There's no. It's just straightforward iteration, um, loops, addition. Maybe that's why I'm feeling um, not great. It's not a terrible puzzle. Nick ne Neko man, Neko man. Let me know if I'm pronouncing it right. Neko man, welcome today, Neko man. Thank you for following me, Neko man. Thank you so much for the follow. Maybe a swap with day five, yeah. But it is Saturday. Um, all right, for sequence in sequences. Uh, so we're gonna go through all of our sequences. Um. The, yeah, it might have been something too. Oh, that's G. That might be what it is. It was might have been something that felt too hard, and people said, "You know what? For this day, let's make it easier." That might make sense. It'd be interesting to be friends with Eric and ask him. Uh, exact Bal Baldurvian. That's exactly what I was thinking. I was thinking on the weekend it would be really. I was expecting a hard one today because I, you know, a little bit, little. Bit, I don't have work. I actually have a lot of stuff I got to get done today, but. That's just because I moved recently. All right, so here's our prediction, new sequences. Uh, we set this equal to our sequence and we're gonna iterate over all of them. And then we have our window. This is nice. This is exactly, uh, this is a nice solution here where you scan over it. We saw this in the last uh, Rust solution as well, which I really liked. Um, or maybe I saw it in the Python solution, I'm not sure but where we have a window of size two and then we subtract them to collect them together. And we push that into our new sequences. And uh, oh, our prediction has our new sequences, sorry. Um, this is our predictions here. New sequences, this is sort of like our collection of differences. It's our collection of differences. Uh, this is making sure that we stop when we have all zeros. And then we say, keep going, we set our new sequence here. 
yeah to our current sequence says okay now do it again so this is the extrapolate for me i did this recursively the uh loop solution seems fine as well and then once we're done here um we have our current right and current left you go uh and then you build up your your results uh where you increase like this and, or you decrease on that side and then your current r and current left so you add up on the right side you subtract on the left side and there we go we have our final results here excellent solution bal Durbin. excellent excellent solution thank you for sharing it with us um and and uh thank you thank you for nice rust solution here all right finally finally g g let's check it out let me take a sip of my water here mm. folks be sure to hydrate be sure to hydrate delicious delicious water here um over on discord let me pull this up um folks just a reminder we do have a discord we do have a discord um lots of awesome people over there all right g's solution is an image is it an image but it is marked a spoiler i think it, hang on i don't think it's an image g i just don't know how to copy and paste stuff apparently that is okay that's cool. There's a way to mark your code, your stuff as spoiler on Discord. I just don't know how. All right, here we go. In extrapolate, part one, part two. I love how short this solution is here. Um, it's a spoiler, yeah. You can like set spoiler text. I like it, I like it. Thank you for using spoiler text. It's probably the way uh, we should be doing it over there. Okay. Um, you skip the following, that's fine, that's fine. Um, we go through every line. We parse it into integers, whimsically made, welcome back. And then we do in extrapolate on it. And then we have part one and part two here, zero and one. So you're pulling out, this is gonna be the last element, this is gonna be the first element minus the previous. And then you have this, uh, I like it. I like you do what I do. You do, you, you do what I do with this um, recursive solution. What a, oh, I love the beautiful recursive solution beautiful recursive solution here in my opinion beautiful recursive diffs is um <laughs> i'm gonna put a space here just for my sanity that was that was hurting my brain to look at i'm gonna put some spaces here just for me too many too too many characters in a row um this is our subtraction finding the differences for i in our range we loop through l which is our incoming list and say find the diffs in here and then we extrapolate all the way down. And at the end of the day, we get the IP and EP um, of this, which is the, this is the last element and this is the first element here. The next easy SCD, I'll try to do it in Microsoft Excel. Yeah, yeah. Gee, I love how tight, small this Python solution is. Thank you for sharing it with us. G points and 500 points, beautiful solution. Beautiful solutions. All right, everybody. Thank you guys so much for being here. Um, thank you guys so much for being awesome. Do we want, let me think here. I really like your solution. Your, your post on the Discord in the uh, no spoilers chat um, made me worried. So so yesterday, yesterday uh, on Discord, I post, I'm really curious tomorrow if, if we'll have a difficulty spike being the second Saturday, because it's Saturday. Uh, yeah, yeah, you get uh, 500 points for sharing a solution. Um, so I was worried about this, and G says, just, good luck, good luck. Make it, you're making me nervous. You're making me nervous. <laughs> but yeah, Whimsically Made, if you share a solution, we'll take a look at it. Um, I think I'm just going to hop off here, save my energy for today. Um, I have some stuff I want to do today. So I don't think I, uh, in that part of the thread, yeah, it's totally fine, totally fine. I just... The good luck made me feel it, it gave me it made me nervous made me nervous which is fine i'm not i'm not being i'm not trying to say it was a bad thing um but i was kind of uh nervous about today a lot of people watching a lot of people watching uh this year last year no one was watching that was okay all right folks we're gonna wrap it up here i think I'm trying to think if there's anything i want to do if there would be anything i'd want to do on stream uh, this morning. Uh, but I think I'm just going to wrap it up. We'll be back tomorrow, folks. Day 10. Uh, Twitch is a wee bit more popular this year. 
I also, uh, Whimsically Made, I started streaming last year for... I'd never streamed before. I was only planning on streaming 25 days uh, for Advent of Code. And then I was going to stop. And then I just had too much fun with it. I just had too much fun with it. But we're going to wrap up for today. We'll be back tomorrow. Folks, I want to I want to just uh, remind people. You don't have to. But we do have a Kofi. If you feel like you want to support the captain a little bit, you can hop over on the Kofi. No pressure. No pressure. But more importantly... If you know someone who would like to take some programming lessons or do a programming class with me, uh, feel free to direct them to the, the Kofi shop. We do group lessons and one-on-one -on -one lessons over there. But I, I'd love, love, love to have them um, and teach you guys. No. We're getting a raid from Connie. Connie Dev, thank you for the raid. Shout out to Connie Dev. Connie uh, what were you working on on your stream today, my friend? What the heck were you doing? We were just about to wrap up here, but we'll stick around for a few minutes. We'll stick around for a few minutes, see what Connie was up to. Welcome to the stream. Also, Kev Prime followed me. Here we go. Here we go. We can do it. We can do it. We can do it. We got. We got to. Because Kev, 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 I gotta, I gotta get you a good song in here. Because you, you, you. I want to make sure it's a good one. Oh boy, Kev Prime. This one, I'm drawing a blank. Kev Prime, it's like one and a half. Start to finish the stream game I made. Uh, started started to finish the stream game. Gotcha, very cool. Kev Prime. Kev Prime. Kev Prime. Thank you for following me today. We got Kev Prime. Kev Prime. Following me, thank you, oh Kev Prime, you followed me, and I would like to say thank you, and welcome you aboard today on this beautiful Saturday. Sorry, Kev Prime, I ruined it, I tried, I tried, points at all, 500, and I'm gonna give points at Kev Prime, an extra 500 points since I butchered that song a little bit, but thank you so much for following. Uh, Connie says, last phase of polishing, and how about you? Probably more ASA. Yeah, we just finished up day nine, parts one and two. Connie, do you got any links for us? You got any links for us um, that you'd like to share? I think you already have permission, but I'll, I'll put this in here just in case. If you got any links for us to check out your project, feel free to drop them in the chat here. We'll take a look. Whimsically made, you make me blush. Thank you for, for that. Uh, don't encourage the singing, Kev Prime says. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta be careful with the singing. Can get, it can get a little bit too much, a little bit too much. But we're going to wrap up here in a little bit. Unless, Connie, you got something. If you got something for us to look at, we'll take a look. Um, but I'm going to start looking for someone to raid into myself. Give the old double raid. Uh, let's see if anyone's doing Advent of Code here. Um, see if we can find someone adventing it up. Advent. Day six and seven. Let's see. Load up all of the software people. Day six and day seven. Lance, welcome back, my friend. It's nice to have you here. How have you been? Dauber raided us yesterday, so we're going to raid Dauber, everybody. I want a 10-hour YouTube video of all these songs. <laughs> yeah, I, they're they're all kind of the same. The almost is, let's say, have a, have a clip from this morning. Let's check it out. All right, let's check it out. Where's my, where's my, where's my button? All right, here we go. S uh, uh, minus 10, 50. Please let me hit something. Working in Gadow, nice. Please let me hit something. So this oh, is going to no. be a Twitch, uh, a stream overlay Twitch I game. Uh, one day, please. Like asteroids, kind of. Looks, okay, and then you can send commands in here. Oh my here. god, oh my god. Oh my <laughs> god. Oh, oh, no one saw it. No one saw it. I guess no one saw it. <laughs> Very nice. This looks cool. Yes. You have to keep us up to date on it. Uh, keep us up to date uh, on what you're doing. I'd love to, uh, I, if you if you'd be willing to, I'd love to check it out and try it on my stream at some point. Uh, Soram, uh, Sorm, uh, someone if someone want to go through and clip them all and put them together, that'd be great. You'd find out it's just the same song over and over and over, uh, but with different different name. We're gonna raid Dabber today. Let's make sure Dabber's still going. Uh, they raided us yesterday. They've been going for an hour and 45. All right. Let's give a shout out to Dever. Um, give him some love, folks. Be sure to click that little heart. You see that little heart right there? 
Grinch. See that little heart? Click it. Give him some love. Uh, I once wrote something to let chat control the arrow keys. Nice. Doing good, thanks. We'll be getting some character sheet stuff uh -huh. on the space game update thread tomorrow. Awesome. Um, we're going to give a raid here to Daver now. Folks, we'll be back tomorrow. Okay, we'll be back tomorrow for day uh, a 10. We'll be back for day 10. Uh, but remember to keep coding, keep growing, be the best you you can be, and you are hi, welcome hi, back hi. anytime. Thank you guys so much for being Captain here. Love Lord, you very much. Bye-bye.